Everything was a fight over yeah. like the gravity hammer. You just spent all day going like, ah, eh, 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 eh. I can hook up with an alien in real life. This is Hollywood. <laughs> I'm joined by Aisha Tyler to talk about her gaming journey. Now, I was putting together this intro and it's kind of ridiculous how accomplished this woman is. We're talking actor, director, stand-up comedian, author, voiceover, artist. Could you not? We try to keep things professional around here. Fine. And now co-founder of ready-made cocktail company, Philosophy. In the gaming world, you'll know Aisha from the Ubisoft press conference from games like Watch Dogs, Halo, Gears. I'm very excited to chat with her about what her gaming journey's been like and we're gonna be delving through her gaming library. So tell me about when you first became a gamer. Well, first of all, I don't think I, I don't think that was a thing when mm. I became a gamer because I'm a thousand years old. So like, I just loved video games mm. and my, my dad was a single dad and like, you know, I always talk about like daddy daycare was like, here's a roll of quarters, <laughs> drop you off at the arcade, don't talk to strangers. So like I babysat myself a lot as a kid. I loved arcade games. And first of all, guys, like I literally was around for the invention of Pong. Like I remember the very first like console game at home, but there were these little handheld games, these little like LCD games. And I really wanted the Donkey Kong. And my dad got me a Donkey Kong after like life altering haranguing like there was no joy in this for either of us i just had to win <laughs> do you know what i mean like there was in a the spirit yeah, of a gamer i have yes, to win it was a war of attrition <laughs> give me the game and then i played it constantly and probably got like kicked out of class a million times for like whipping that out of my pocket. you snuck it in school oh absolutely i mean this is like pre-phone so like i don't think anybody even knew what it was and then i would like get out of school and i would play it at the bus stop and like miss my bus you know i mean just classic early gamer behavior. So early years in the arcades, what was your console gaming history up until sort of modern day? How do you decide which consoles, right. you know, you PC gamer? I was a PC gamer first. I really love this game and it was the one where you were on an island and you'd solve a bunch of puzzles. Riven? Mist. Uh, yes, Riven, no Mist, Mist, yes. Mist. I, met, I played Mist and Riven, but Mist. Loved it. And yeah. still sometimes, and this is how you know you're like, you, you need some kind of like, like therapy is when like you're in the real world like this this real life <laughs> scenario looks just like mist <laughs> you need help so you went through mist mist and then consoles or was it all pc and then i feel like the first game i played on a console was halo oh. my friends would come over and we would just go like you know yeah. or on four and just I'm... murder each other. It's all offline, combat evolved. And then three was a was like a big hit. And mm -hmm. like th three was like probably the biggest hit in my house. Yeah. Because uh, Gravity Hammer. So murder, 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 Gravity Hammer, destroy your friends over and over again. Like it was really just, everything was a fight over yeah. like the Gravity Hammer. No, yeah. nothing else was as important. Not plasma swords, nothing. Gravity Hammer, someone gets it. And you would know because you would hear somebody laughing. Whoever had found the Gravity Hammer would start laughing hysterically. And then right after that, you would be dead. I never wanted to play online because I didn't want to, I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm a nice person, but I did want to hurt strangers. I just only wanted oh. to hurt people that I knew and that I can just laugh at them in their face. You know what I mean? It was just some more, much more satisfying. Getting mixed messages on, I don't want to hurt anyone. Like, I don't want to hurt them literally. But you know, like I don't care about like chopping the head off of some guy in Topeka. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to chop my buddy's head off that I've been, I've known since I was 12. Exactly. You don't, you understand. You oh no. Everybody understands what I'm saying. You're obviously, you know, shooting, like, you do so much. I was looking at like, I had to write you an intro and I was like, good Lord, like there's multi hyphenate and then there is you. How do you balance gaming with everything that you're doing? Well, I don't, and it's a sadness. When I was younger and I wasn't as busy, I, I gamed a lot, I played a lot. I mean, I would go until four in the morning on a weekday, many, many days in a row, yeah. and it was no problem because I, I wasn't doing anything. But I'm lucky that I've been super busy, and so my gaming life has really diminished, and that's why I've gotten back into arcade gaming because I could just yeah. go to the arcade for a couple hours and really get my rocks off. Mm -hmm. But I feel like anytime you start a new game, then it just becomes about, like, I've got to finish this campaign. Yeah. I've got to pick up all the caps. I've got to destroy all the worlds. And you can't stop. And I know that about my personality. You mentioned The Last of Us. That was one of my favorites. So let's go back and talk about something that I think people are thinking about, which is like adaptations of games to yes. television and film. Because this is the space that I work in. And I think we've all been deeply disappointed by almost every film and TV adaptation that's ever been done. And I don't I'll fight for the first Resident Evil movie. 
Well, so it is a, okay. I hear laughing from behind the cameras. Yeah. I like the first I'll person you want me. They're serviceable, but yeah. they're not elevated, right? Like exactly. it's adequate. Yeah. A two hour movie is never going to be as exciting as no. spending 200 hours immersed in a world. You're never going to get satisfied. And then for mm. people who don't play the game, they're like, why do I care? So it's really hard to thread that needle, mm. right? But The Last of Us killed it. Yeah. Just killed it. Because at least with a series, you're getting much more, it's a much richer experience mm -hmm. than just a two hour film. You can make a lot of mistakes, but you've got eight hours. So the mistakes are inevitably going to be caught up in between some really great moves. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so finally, I feel like The Last of Us and also Fallout like really got it right. And yeah. the funny thing is Fallout Show doesn't feel to me anything like the gameplay, but that's fine. It just captures the spirit of the game mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Whereas The Last of Us somehow feels very much like the gameplay. And that's because The Last of Us is so filmic as a game. Like it feels like you're in a movie. It's so emotional. I could talk about this stuff forever because I, it's like, oh. this is the two things I care the most about is film and television and video games. So like, blah, 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 blah. I'm, guys, I'm starting to free. <laughs> I'm timing out. I'm actually turning into a human version of a spinning wheel. Oh, that, 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 that. And I just got really excited. No, good. I mean, so um, Last of Us, do you remember playing that for the first time? Yeah. I, like, do. I just remember thinking this is the most beautiful video game I've ever seen. Just out the window. Even just before the, oh, like, the, the opening oh, menu. Oh, yeah. This is so beautiful. Like, and it was so emotional. And so I just kept saying, God, this is like a movie. This is like a movie. Like on the game side, for people in film and television, where I was like, well, games are never going to replace films. And I was like, no, this really does feel like you're in a film. Just so evocative, so emotional. Like the character beats, the story beats. A well made game. Yeah. It has that effect on you. So would you go back to The Last of Us like now? That now is that you've kind seen of my the gaming show? plan. It's like, yeah. that's the game I want to play again, um, which is weird. But it is like seeing a movie and then wanting to go back and read the book. I feel like that the ways in which they expanded the storytelling in the show made me want to go back and remember those moments from the game. And I don't think I played all the DLC. And I know they've actually probably upgraded it a bunch since I played it last. Oh, I was telling you guys before we started, that there is like a specific fight and Ellie just kept dying. And I, I had to stop playing. I was like so upset. This pile of ones and zeros is breaking my heart. I can't do this anymore. Well, I was going to ask you, what kind of a gamer are you when it comes to games like that? Are you the type of person who will use all your stuff immediately or do you hoard until potentially there's a big boss battle, but even then you don't want to use your stuff? I'm definitely a hoarder. I feel like I picked up every single bottle cap in the wasteland during Fallout 3. The like, richest woman in the, in the wasteland. filled with bobbleheads and bottle caps. <laughs> I was also a very good paladin. I would give that one guy by the battleship water every time I saw him. Again, this pile of ones and zeros. He's thirsty. And oh God, what's the name of the character on the Fallout series? What is her name? Oh, Lucy. Lucy. I was so happy that Lucy was a paladin. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God. She's good. She's like, she was very good. Like she was the most good. She was yeah. exactly who I would have played in the game because I was like, I got to save everyone. So you, you're a, a typical good I'm hard. very good. I mean, there's no reason for me to be good, right? It's a made up experience, yeah. but I, I'm very good in every every condition, every context. Have you ever been tempted to be bad in a game? I honestly am incapable. For example, I would never play Grand Theft Auto, which is not even like a judgment on people who do play it. No. It's not that. It's like, I just, I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I would just feel so sad even though they're they're made up things. I was like a really dorky kid. So when you're a nerd and then you're bullied in your mind, everybody is imagining that they're Superman and they can fly and they can save the people that are getting beaten up and they can save the world. So that was my internal narrative when I was a kid. And that's just stuff for me as an adult. I'm gonna be very nice to everyone because people are mean to me and I'm gonna save the world. I'm gonna stop the train and I give that guy a bottle of water. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. So if I play something, if I play Mass Effect, I will do Paragon Run. Mm -hmm. But then, the Renegade stuff is more fun. It is fun. I imagine that there's a whole gaming experience I'm not having because I'm also like a rule follower. I'm not a big Mass Effect person. I played it a little bit, but oh God, everyone's going to be so mad at me on this. Like everyone's going to, I just used to call it cutscene effect. <gasps> <laughs> just too many cutscenes I have to be back. so long. <laughs> well, let's see, like Mass Effect 1, setting up everything. Mm -hmm. Mass Effect 2, all right go out, mm -hmm. kill a bunch of people. Mass Effect 3, all oh, the world's ending, we should talk about it. We should talk about it, we should talk about it, we should look at each other, we should stand there. Romance? No, there's no romance in gaming. There is. There's murder. There's shagging in that game. And feeding people. <laughs> if I watch people shagging, I will go on the internet. <laughs> you can hook up with an alien like right away in Mass Effect. Damn. I can hook up with an alien in real life. This is Hollywood. Oh, this is really good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
for everybody online, I drove over here with these like fancy ice cubes in my backpack. Mm -hmm. And they're not so fancy anymore, but they do have gold inside of them, which I felt was very fancy. Yeah, can you fancy. see? I can. Yeah, I brought you like a fancy, a fancy drink. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. To Cheers gaming. to you. I love it so much. It's sad because it's something like, it's like being like a competitive swimmer or something mm. when I was in my 20s. Like to do that again requires so much intense devotion of time mm. that I kind of lament my gaming career and I want it back, but I don't know when I can get it back the way that I had it when I was a little younger. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I don't have the Like your past, your past lives. Like my past lives, exactly. Like it is my past life was when I was like a really hardcore gamer. We touched on Fallout a lot. Uh, I want to know what your experience with Fallout 3. Fallout 3 was the game. I mean, that was the game, right? That, yeah. was, the, that was the greatest. I had played like kind of more environmental mission-oriented games that were like puzzle-driven, like Mist and Riven. I was like a gameplay I was open to, mm -hmm. but I had been doing a lot of like murder with Halo. So um, it was very soothing. I love, I mean, I like puzzles. I love puzzles. Like this is also really embarrassing, but like one thing I do do is I play a lot of word games now. Like that, like, so I can play every day. So every day I wake You're up. You're on that Wordle train? I do Wordle. I do, I do Spelling Bee. I do Strands. I wish they put the archives. Up, yeah. But like the archives are the minis. I'm like, okay. Yeah, the minis, you do the minis. I mean, you can sit on the toilet and like, just crush 10 minis in a row really fast, right? Um, what I call it. Depending on, you know, how your <laughs> internal situation is. But, how much um, fiber have you had? Yeah, so how much fiber have you had? Are you hydrated? So you, you got, you're really into word games and then you get Fallout. And so you oh, kind of had that. Fallout, and what I love about Fallout is that it's still a puzzle. It, like it, for me, it combined all the gameplay that I like, which is like TPS, and puzzles, collecting things, mm -hmm. and solving problems, and remember things that have happened early in the game and bringing them back into later behaviors. People remember you, like, mm -hmm. I remember you, you shot this person, you stole my thing, you took my caps, I want water. And so there's just this nice global like experience when you're playing Fallout 3. I will say that that is my favorite of the Fallout iterations. And now I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of the whole Fallout library, but I did not love New Vegas. I hated those death claws. I hated them so much. I hate them now. I have nightmares about them now, and I'll never forget give them for putting those in my game. I also probably obviously never beat them, so that's why I'm so mad. <laughs> for, I just, I, I don't know, maybe because Fallout 3, I loved it so much. Mm. I mean, I probably had 300 hours in that game. Damn. So then everything else felt like a pale comparison. You've gone from being a game lover to being in games. So can yeah. you talk about, what was the first game you were in? The first game I was in was Gears of War 3, the, the DLC for Gears of War 3. And that's because they knew I was a fan of the game and I tweeted a lot about it and they were like, hey, do you want to do a voice? I just think I was just like, I freaking love this game, it's rad. And I mean, listen, it probably helped that I was on an animated show that a lot of gaming people like, which is Archer. So, you know, there was that kind of crossover. They knew me as a voice over artist already, but uh, yeah, that was the first thing I did. I did Halo Reach. I did, I did like an NPC for Halo Reach, which is also really fun. The Gears one was fun because mm -hmm. that character was super active, which mm -hmm. was a kind of driving, driving campaign. But for Halo Reach, I got to die a lot. Oh, what's that like? Horrible. What, doing the voices? You have to do thousands of death rattles, right? Like, you know, you have to have all these different iterations of how you're falling off a cliff, you fall yeah. off a cliff another way, you fall off a cliff from far away. Then, you know, you get stabbed, you get stabbed, you get cut on the head, but like a million, million screams. So like, you just spend all day going, ah, 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 What's like your favorite one to do? I mean, the one where you fall off a cliff and you're like going, ah. Yeah, cause it's kind of funny. <laughs> I was in a really big Halo place after Infinite came out. Mm -hmm. They put them all in one package. So right, you just have right. to have like one thing on the Xbox or PC and you can and boot. And you can play through all. Yeah. Like, That's, That's dangerous smart. knowledge. That's like the Halo version of Netflix and chill, right? Just like to go through all of yeah. it. Like you binge the whole series. That's pretty dope. I don't think it would even take that long. It probably would. Like a long weekend. It, yeah. That sounds like a dream, but I genuinely just can't do that anymore. No. No. Did you ever get repetitive strain injury? I was saying earlier that I remember there was a very long period of my life where when I closed my eyes, I could see a reticle. Like I could see, I could always see a red reticle all the time. Oh my God. And that, I didn't think that that was very healthy. I used to play so much of The Sims. Oh that yeah, I yeah, would yeah. Get, like, yeah, yeah, get. That was my, yeah. I just had, but like I could, I could hear the music any like time. Oh yeah, I used no, to come into the house and sing that. Oh. That was like yeah. the, the soundtrack to my life. Yeah, yeah, totally. I would just, but I would be like, you know, the bossa nova beats <laughs> from The Sims. <laughs> 
just talking to you reframed my sense of myself as a gamer because I feel like I've really mourned the fact that mm. I don't play as much as I used to. Like it was so much a part of my identity. Yeah. I feel like if you really love gaming, it's like a way that you see yourself as a way that you define mm -hmm. yourself. And so then when you can't do it, it's like I was saying, like I used to be I used to be a competitive swimmer and now I don't swim anymore. And what does that mean? But then just talking, I was like, oh, I play games every day. Either you're being hard on yourself because I don't think that ever really goes away. Yeah. And you are still very connected to stuff. Like you're bringing up the Fallout show. And like that's I mean, I guess that I is. Mean, I love it. I have over. a real passion for it right like yeah. I was so relieved when The Last of Us was so great because I was yeah. like this thing that I love and and not just the game itself but this world that I love that keeps turning out these terrible adaptations like finally people yeah. can see like what a special experience it can be yeah but yeah like it is it's just like in your bones but like literally I don't know where we were the other day and I, I, like we were do I, we were just doing something and literally I'm like I hate it first like I'm like oh my god what's wrong with me I beat you with chewing. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridic what's wrong with you? I, I, it's just that game of mindset. It's just gamer mindset never goes away. Yeah. Like, I'll be an old lady and I'll be like, I pooped first. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that part of my life, actually. Because <laughs> That's when you game. And I'm old <laughs> and I'll be pooping. I'll be like, put me like, and level up. Firm poop. <laughs> Regular PMs. <laughs> That's my PM achievement unlocked. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that part of my life. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me about games. This was so amazing. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, so what, you are so busy. What have you got going on? Uh, well, lots of exciting things, depending on how you see it, either season 17 or season two of Criminal Minds oh, cool. Evolution, because it's 17 of Criminal Minds, season yeah. two of Criminal Minds Evolution mm -hmm. is out now, streaming now on Paramount Plus, and I have a brand new cocktail company, we've been drinking our, our margarita, mm -hmm. it's called Losophy, like philosophy, uh, and it is organic, as you can see it doesn't have any colors or dyes or mm -hmm. weird stuff in it, it's just tequila, triple sec, and lime, and it's 100% organic and it's foolproof, it's the best tasting ready to margarita ever and i don't say that because i love it even though i do i say it because i drink a lot of really <laughs> margaritas to develop this product uh you can see the video on my socials is yellow a flavor i drink every like weird neon crappy margarita to figure out what made a great margarita and i'm really proud of it and there's nothing like it out there so people can get it at lossafee.com thank you so much and cheers, cheers to gaming to gaming on the next episode of star players